Hi, this is Jeff with Birder's Diary. In this video, I'm going to show you the new home screen features for version 5 of Birder's Diary. The theme for version 5 is the information you want, when you want it, at your fingertips. And with that in mind, the new home screen has been redesigned with four new panes that show you the information that all users have been asking for for some time in one form or another. We have four new panes here. Think of them as four new windows. Each window is always on top of other windows and anchored to its respective side. All of these windows are always on top of other windows and anchored to their side. The charts and graphs are anchored to the bottom. Latest sightings are anchored to the right. Latest outings are anchored to the left. And your most recent photos are anchored to the top. Think of it as a toolbar, always on top and always anchored to its respective sides, such as this toolbar here in Birder's Diary. Let's talk about the common features of each of these panes. One of the common features of each of these panes is that each can be slid up or down or in and out by placing your mouse over the innermost edge of each of these panes. Take a look at the charts and graphs pane. If I position my cursor over the edge here, I can grab it and slide it down. Notice what happens. In this particular case, the charts get scrunched. They get resized and made shorter and shorter in height to a certain point and then it's just slid down from view to its minimum height, which in this case is just seeing the very top of the chart to let you know that you've got charts down there. If I again position my cursor over the top edge of that pane, I can pull it up until I can see more and more and more of the chart until the charts are maximized. In this case, this is the maximum size. I can't drag that up anymore and change the size of this. Let's, let's take that back down to, oh, that's a good size. I like that size. Let's take a look at the ones on the left and right. The latest outings. I can, for example, take that, scrunch that in all the way to a, a certain minimum size. Same thing over here. I can also pull out and say, okay, that's how much I want to see. And over here, let's say I just want to see the location. That's what I want to see there. The same with the photos up top. You can just shrink that down to its minimum size and you know you've got photos. Anytime you want to see more, you go up, you grab on that, pull it down. There's my photos with a tooltip. Tells you what you're seeing there. Another common feature of these four panes is the show and hide feature. Something you'll probably use a lot in order to create more space immediately on your main Birder's Diary window. You can show and hide each of these panes individually. There's new options for that under the view menu. Latest outings grid, most recent sightings grid, latest photos panel, and charts and graphs panel. Notice there's also a control key for each of those, which allows you to show or hide each of these much faster from anywhere in Birder's Diary without clicking on the view menu. And notice that it's control A and B for left and right, Y and Z for top and bottom. Easy to remember. A, B, left and right. The first two letters of the alphabet. Y and Z, top and bottom. The last two letters of the alphabet. For example, I want to get rid of the charts. That's Control Z. Gone. Bring charts back. Control Z again. Let's say I want to get rid of pictures and latest sightings. Well, pictures are Y. Latest sightings are B. Just that quick. I want the pictures back, I want the sightings back, control Y, control B. Again, the idea here is the information you want when you want it at your fingertips. Let's show you typically how you might configure Birder's Diary to show when you start it up. So let's go ahead and get rid of these sticky note tips that are new with version 5. To show them, I'm going to get rid of the charts and graphs and the photos which are control Y control Z done with that let's drag him up by clicking on the title click dismiss dismiss I can also just click enter enter typically I'm going to have my lifer bars up here 
and here they come. Lifer bars are a feature introduced in a prior version of Birder's Diary. It contains a blue bar, how many species I've seen this year, a green bar, how many species I've seen in my life at this location and taxonomic list, a red line, vertical line, which is my big year count reflected here. So 197 species is the most species I've seen in a year in Colorado. And then the far right, which is how many species Colorado has, 502, at least according to my checklist data. I've got that up and then along with several other lifer bars I use. Now let's display my charts and my photos again. Control Z, Control Y. Notice that the lifer bars resize. This might be the typical startup situation for me in Birder's Diary. Along the top here, what photos have I taken recently? Over here are my latest outings and checklists. Okay, where have I been? and what date and time. Notice again the lifer bars resize to fit that. Over here are my latest sightings. What's the last thing I've seen? The last 10 things I've seen and so on. This is every sighting in your database. And down here are charts. Charts I've created that I like. This is how I've got Birder's Diary configured to come up when I start it. Now, as I use Birder's Diary, maybe perhaps want to enter sightings, want to generate some reports, want to review and edit some sightings, I might clear and make more space. But this is how I've got Birder's Diary configured to come up. I might get rid of my charts, and there's two ways to do that. I might just take it and drag it down, create more space here, take my photos, drag them up. Or what I might do, and what I tend to do, is to just control Y control Z gets rid of that space if I feel I need further space on left and right control A control B I'm back to what I was pre version 5 basically standard space where I can do things such as add sightings view and edit sightings or perhaps generate some reports this is how you should use these new panels always on top when you want them. I want to see my latest photos. I love seeing my latest photos that I've taken so I'll keep that up while I work. One other common feature with V5 is an improved and revamped pop-up menu on the main Birder's Diary window area. If you click anywhere in here where the lifer bars are you're going to get a pop-up window which contains also information for your latest sightings grid. You can show that from here. You can also choose how to sort it, either by the sightings date time or by when you actually entered the sighting. You can show and hide the latest outings. You can show and hide new graphs and charts, refresh them, add a new one, and the same with photos. Refresh the photos. So that's new in V5. So just remember you've got several ways now to work with these new panes. Uh, under the view menu, pop-up menu, and then your control keys. For example, if I want to get rid of the latest sightings, control B. That covers the common things. So let's talk about each of these panels one at a time. Let's talk about the new photo panel. It's probably the simplest one. For example, to show it, it's control Y. To hide it, it's control Y again. So show and hide. What it does is it shows you the latest photos you have added to Birder's Diary in the space available. If I expand this, it'll show you more. If I shrink it, it'll show you less. If you hover your mouse over each, you're going to get the common name and the scientific name for each photo. If you double click on a photo, it will bring up the new photo viewer in V5 with all the photos from that sighting. Okay, all the photos you attach to that sighting. Down below, we've got new information. The sighting date, time, common scientific name, where seen, the observer, the file name, the size, dimensions, and two out of two. Let's talk a little bit about the new additions to the photo viewer. These three buttons on the left you should be familiar with allow you to add and remove photos or attachments from a sighting. Here is the crop feature. I can crop a photo now in here by just dragging 
and sizing. Notice you're going to get the dimensions here as you drag and resize. If you like, click outside here to clear that. Click outside the photo to clear the cropping rectangle. If you hold down the control key, it's going to crop and drag a rectangle with the current aspect ratio selected. Again, select outside to clear it and you can now drag anywhere you want. Click on the crop button and you can see that it is now cropped based on the rectangle. I can undo and it resorts back to the original photo. I can rotate. I can rotate left or right. You can see I can just rotate all the way around. I can also resize. It gives you an option to resize by dimensions or percentage of current width and height. The dimensions allow you to maintain aspect ratio or not. So if I enter in 1000, it knows to keep that at that size. What we also have here is a save button. So now I can save changes. So I can rotate and then save if I want. And then there's an options button. Allows me to see all photos by descending by date descending if I don't want to see by sighting attachments or all photos by species. I can look up all photos of a Juno Heliconian butterfly. And then I get to select how many photos to load at a time. Well, I would only want five loaded at a time if I've got more. I click on OK and I'm getting all of the Juno Heliconian photos in my database. I can come back up here and just choose all photos descending. Want more space? Get rid of the photos up there. Size this down. And there you have more space. Now another feature here is that I can now use the page down and page up keys or the arrow down and arrow up keys to move between selected photos. And I can press the enter button or the space bar to select and load that photo. If I go all the way down to the last one and there's more photos to load, next time I down arrow, it's going to ask me to load more. I say yes, it will load four more because that's what I told it I wanted to load. And I can scroll down again and see what I've got. So these are the new features of the photo viewer and the photo panel. Bring it back, control Y, and there it is. And finally, one more new feature in V5 that's centered around the photo viewer and photos or in attachments is the new photo button. That will open up the photo viewer and by default display the latest photos that you have taken. So you can view all your latest photos in here, work with them, edit them, do what you like. Or if you're looking for a particular species, you can come down here and say, I want all photos of my Kerwinski's beauty. That guy right there. So I click on that, I click OK, and there we go. I have my photos. This is the new photo button in the toolbar. That sums it up. Now let's talk about the two grids on both sides of your main Birder's Diary window in version 5. The one on the right, latest sightings, has been around for a few versions of Birder's Diary, but it's been revamped for version 5 with new functionality and new purpose. In the past, you used to have to configure the latest sightings grid with taxonomic lists, observers, and other configuration options. Now, it simply shows you all of the sightings in your database, and it lists them in reverse chronological order. Let's slide that out. By default, it's on your right side, and you can see what we have here. We have uh, the common name, the number of attachments, location, and notice that the location produces a pop-up that shows you the full path of the location. When seen, notice that we have a new date format now. You get the day, the date, and the hours and minutes, and the observer. One thing you can do with this, just one of the things, is you can rearrange. Let's assume you want the date to come in front of attachments here. You click on the header, you click the little down arrow that comes up, and you want to swap it with attachments. Now you've got common name, when scene, location, attachments. Oh, wait a second, I wanted attachments to come after when scene, so let's pick on that and let's swap that with location. Now you've got common name, when scene, and so on. It will remember all of this, your settings, and you won't have to do it again. Me personally, I like attachments here first, and then I like to see uh, either date or location. But how I like to view this then is I keep this scrunched in over here on the right. 
with the common name and the number of attachments. So I can see what I've been seeing and if I've got any photos for it. Now there's other interaction with this aside from formatting this. I can double click on a particular sighting and up will come the edit box for that. I can edit it. I can also view the photos that I have for that particular sighting. That's one thing I can do. I can also change the sort order here by right clicking here on the background choosing last sightings entered grid choosing sort and either by sightings date time or by entry date time you can select this and scroll down through and see what you've been seeing lately you could double click to edit you can also select a list here by shift clicking and then right click latest sightings entered grid and copy selected rows to paste buffer. That allows me to enter that list of names into my email if I so choose. Now let's go take a look at this new grid on the left, latest outings and checklist. Let's slide it out. Notice how your lifer bars all get resized. What we have is location, species count, attachments, date, and observer. How a checklist or an outing is defined is by observer, by day of the week, and by location. So all sightings you entered for a particular location on a particular day for you is considered an outing or a checklist. And that's what this is showing you in reverse chronological order. Again, you can swap columns here. You can move observer over here and say I want it there. Or I can move it right back and say I want it on the right. You get exactly what you want here. And then how I like to see this is I like to keep those over here like this so I can always see where I've been most recently notice the tooltip pop up for the location it gives you the entire path and what I tend to do is shrink location down real small and move this over here now I can see where I've been how many species I saw and how many attachments I have and if there's a question as to well what jungle means I can see right away that that's jungle behind Delta Tower Alamar I can double click on an outing and it will bring up preset to the date and time, the observer, the location. The only thing it doesn't know is which taxonomic list you want to use. Make sure you select all of the taxonomic list you use in order to view all five species and three attachments. If I click on continue, up come five species or spa in this particular case and any attachments attached to them. Notice there were three. So I can view all attachments for this outing by selecting all sightings and clicking on the little camera icon here. That's how to use the latest outings checklist. So when Birders Diary starts up you immediately get to see where you've been recently, how many species you've been seeing, how many pictures, photos you've been seeing, and then a specific list of that. So actually this list is over on the right. If I saw five species, you can pretty much count it being these five species guy. And that's how you use these two grids on your left and right. Now onto the final piece of this version five puzzle, the charts and graphs panel. Let's go ahead and get rid of latest outings and latest sightings. Control A, Control B. And how do I bring up the charts and graphs? Control Z. This is how I last had it sized but I can shrink it all the way down to where I've just got that or I can bring it all the way up. Once you bring it all the way up you get a scroll bar at the bottom that will show you any additional charts and graphs you have off the right hand side. This is a very exciting piece. You have four graph types to choose from, a myriad of chart layout, and unlimited ways to configure this. If you have an advanced license in Birders Diary, you can have as many charts and graphs as you want. If you have a basic license, you get a maximum of two. Now let's take a look at each chart and what you have in each one. You have, if you may have noticed, several small buttons here, right here and here. Obviously, the left and right buttons allow you to move these charts left or right in the sort order. Of course, it remembers them. The pencil down here allows you to edit the graph setup criteria. The refresh button allows you to refresh the data. These stay static and only refresh when you ask them to. On the pop-up, you'll notice there is a new charts and graphs where you can hide, add new chart, and refresh all charts. Or you can just refresh each individual one. You can also remove a graph if you no longer want that one up, decide you don't like it anymore. 
Up here in the upper left is configuring chart type and background. And then in the middle there, the view chart and large window. This is pretty neat. Let's demonstrate with this Mexico chart I've got showing my species seen per year for three different taxonomic lists, butterflies, birds, and vascular plants. If I click on the eye, I'm going to get a bigger window for viewing this. Now, I necessarily have my birder's diary window shrunk way down in order to create these videos. Normally, of course, I've got a computer monitor screen that's about five times this large. So while we're viewing this, let's go ahead and get out of the chart window. So Control-Z does that. Let's drag this over here into view. And what you get is a big window that you can size to any size you want. Minimum size, big size. You have these two scrollers on either side that allow you to rotate and then over here spin. I can turn off the legend to make it larger, turn it on. I can even export this graph as a PNG file. If you want to mail this to a friend, you want to include this in a report, you can save this as a PNG file. Press the X to close that window. Press Control Z to bring back up the charts and graphs window. Let's look at some of the other things. Well, I've already shown you the left and right. I showed you the view chart and large window button. Let's look at the configure. Now we've got configure charts. Here are the one, two, three, four, five options you get. You get, I think it's 17 chart types. And if we look at this, it live updates as we move it. Notice now we've got the area charts. Each has their own thing instead of being stacked, where the birds are stacked on top of the plants. I can keep going, and I have this kind of chart, this sort of chart, and so on and so forth. Lots and lots of charts chart types, line chart with points. This is a radar chart. Again with an area chart but not 3D mode now. Everything below here is not 3D. Another line chart showing you how things have progressed. This is a nice line chart. Again, here's a bar chart coming from the left. One going up stacked bars. So obviously for this I, I have said that for this particular graph I really like this last one. Let's look at the backgrounds. We have a few background options. If I tab down to background and use my left and right arrow keys I can change the background to a few ones. These bottom four are going to be colors. White, gray, medium gray, charcoal gray, and black. If you need a black color there you go. The rest are, are textures of various shapes. That's a cool one crumpled paper, I don't know, fish rock, and so on all the way out to the right are some nice ones as well. Whatever you feel like you're into, you get to choose. This may puzzle a few people, x-axis label spacing. Notice down here this chart type is lifers per year. And if I choose to label every year, look how busy that x-axis gets. So I slide this out and uh, I pick something like every five years. And that seems to work the best and seems to be most intuitive to me. Go on down. I can show a legend in this if I want, but it takes up a lot of space. And since I know what that chart is, I can turn that off. In addition, if I close this out, when I mouse over, I'm going to get what this is. I'm going to get birds, Clements Cornell, and I'm also going to get down here vascular plants, and then a list of the actual values. Back to configuration. The final thing I didn't show you was the logarithmic y-axis. You can turn a linear y-axis into a logarithmic. If I turn that on now you can see it goes 1, 10, 100, 1000. Turn it off and it goes up in even increments of 200. So that is the chart configuration and your options there. And you can play around with these on each one. Each guy has his own set. If I turn on logarithmic there, you can see how that changes things. Gives me a little more detail at the lower levels. So now, another one is editing the chart, the graph setup. And you're going to see this when you actually add a chart. So what I do is I'm going to bring up the graph setup. In order to see this, though, I've got to minimize the charts and graphs so I hide or control Z 
And since this is actually bigger than the size window, I can use the scroll bar in the main window on the right to see everything. This is your basic graph setup window where you get to specify everything. So you can see here that I've specified one of four chart types, lifers, attachment, species per year, lifers per year. A caption, which is optional, I can leave that off. I've set up the observers, location, the taxonomic list I want to use. And if I wanted to specify a taxonomic filter or user-defined data, that is also an option for me. Let's say I wanted to add in, in addition to butterflies and birds and vascular plants, Let's, let's go ahead and add spiders, my insects, odonata, and amphibians, and reptiles. Let's just fill it up. Let's click OK. Control-Z to pop it back up. And look what we've got. Not very clear, so let's go to the big window. Control-Z to hide it. You can see a little better what we've got. Reptiles in North America, zero. Butterflies seven and so on not a zero and this is what you got in 2017 however I've seen 32 down here one dragonfly 126 birds and so on so let's close this up bring it back up control Z so that's how charts and graphs work you can see here I've got a species per year and it's I use a stacked bar chart there so I can see how many butterflies I've seen in this year um, birds versus plants versus butterflies and so on over here we've got attachments photos and I picked six taxonomic lists over here's ABA area lifers you notice that we have the graph type down below here's a bar chart for lifers and then this was my home county in Colorado and this is species per year how many species per year of birds I see in Teller County. All neat charts, all the data you want, when you want it, where you need it. Well, let's take a quick peek at this again. Shrink that down to where I like it. Notice the chart type stays under there. I'll lose the caption and the legend to save room. I'm going to turn back on photos, control Y. I'm going to turn on the left and right grids. And there you have it, a quick look at some of the major new features in version 5. I hope you found this useful, and I greatly hope you enjoy version 5 of Birder's Diary. Thank you.